Let me just say this has got the feeling of perfection. And so I'm just going to kind of unwrap it here. Hey guys, welcome back to Greenhorn Barbecue and Beer. If you're new here, my name is Todd. Sassy's over watching TV with the children. Yes, we got fur babies. And what I'm gonna do tonight is trim and prep an 18 pound full packer brisket to throw on the Yoder loaded Wichita tomorrow morning for an all day cook. I also have the care package from Uncle Steve's Shake. I feel three big bottles in here, so I can't wait to share these with you guys. So the way we're gonna do this brisket is we're gonna trim it up. Now I'm just gonna do a backyard trim. I'm not gonna do anything special. You've seen me do this before. This isn't competition, but I don't want any big chunks of fat that aren't gonna render either. So I'm gonna find a happy medium. I'm gonna call it the greenhorn trim. And if you don't have any, be sure to get yourself some kosher salt. I'm not plugging this particular brand over any others, but you want the kosher salt. It's thicker, coarser. Uh, it gives you a much better bark than your other run-of-the-mill types of salt, table salt. You also want to get yourself some coarse ground black pepper. Make sure you get yourself a lot of this. And it's handy to have around when you're doing a lot of briskets. All right, now, why am I trimming and seasoning tonight? Well, I'm not going to season it completely. Definitely going to trim it. Then we're going to cover it in salt. And I'm going to be putting it back in the fridge and letting it set up overnight. Kind of a quick, dry brine. Now, I plan on firing up the Yoder sometime early in the morning, probably around five or six, and I'm hoping to get at least good 12 hours on that brisket, if not more. I'm gonna be going for probe tenderness, not necessarily temperature, although if it gets to 206, I'm really gonna start scrutinizing the doneness a little bit more. If it's not feeling like jello, you know, if you slap it and it doesn't jiggle, it's probably not done. Anyway, more about that tomorrow. Let's get into trimming. I really like I really like this torque uh, trifold paper towel dispenser. It sits right there. I don't have to grab the whole roll to grab one or two sheets. Even with dirty hands, I just grab it and go. It's great stuff. I'll leave a link down in the description. You know, it's definitely got a little bit of silver skin. Looks like the butcher was pretty aggressive getting this side done. Usually, I see a lot more silver skin in here. Um, that's not bad. Um, it's definitely got a thin point. And uh, it's got a nice half of a fat cap. You know, I'd expect to see a little bit more. Now, this is a choice brisket, so beggars can't be choosers. And it's just another reason why I'm just going to give it a greenhorn trim here. Nothing exotic, okay? But it is going to be on the Yoder, so I'm probably going to be rounding the flat here a little bit. Um, I'm going to kind of protect the meat by leaving this on. I'm not even going to touch this right here. I'm only going to lightly trim it through here. I'm going to take off anything that's going to burn away in that smoker, like this over here. And uh, that's where we're going to start. So let's go. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get some salt now. I'm gonna keep my right hand clean, my left hand, and I'm just gonna start pounding it on here. All right, guys, there we go. So I'm just gonna kind of lightly tent this, put it right back in the fridge, let it dry brine overnight, and tomorrow morning when I wake up, I'll be wearing a different shirt, it'll be a different day, but it's gonna be the same old great Uncle Steve shake. Hey, hey good morning guys. Hey, it's, uh, it's pretty early in the morning. It's just after uh, 4, 4 a.m. here. Um, the only reason I'm able to be outside is because uh, you know we live in Southern California near the ocean. So as we left off last night, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, 
get the smoker ready. I'm going to use a charcoal chimney to start the fire initially. Then I'm going to put some mesquite on there to get the pit up to temperature. And while it's getting up to temperature, we're going to go inside and get the brisket ready. All right, guys, I'm back inside. I don't have to whisper as much. You know, I don't want to wake up my neighbors, but they're probably going to smell that mesquite and hickory wood coming up. So they're probably up already. It's just about 420. Hmm, that's interesting. So I'm going to break out that brisket and uh, let's see how it looks after a night of dry brining. I don't see, I don't see any more additional salt on there. It looks like it's, it's all been absorbed and look at that color. That's, that's what happens after a night of dry brining right there. All right, like I mentioned last night, I'm going to be taking some of this Uncle Steve's Shake Competition cow powder. It's fresh, straight from the hard Texas. So I'm going to go ahead and generously apply plenty of this cow powder here. Now this is going to be the first layer of flavor, and I'll show you what I mean here in a minute. Now this is the side opposite the fat cap. Okay, so I'm putting on plenty of the cow powder here, making sure I do the edges. Okay. Don't forget that point. On top of that, now that I got a nice complex, wonderful flavors of that Uncle Steve shake, I'm just gonna put the Texas standby, coarse ground black pepper right over the top. Okay, nice and thick. Okay, this is what's gonna help build that bark. Okay, pat it in a little bit. I'm gonna turn it over. Okay, and repeat. Now, something I like about this Uncle Steve shake it's got this little flap right here. Let's open it up a little bit. Get you a little bit more. Look at that. Oh yeah. That looks good, don't it? I love those colors. Okay, now I just want to show you how I'm kind of being economical here. I've got about five ounces left. You know, this is a 10 ounce bottle here. And uh, really only needed um, about half of that for this 18 pound before trimming brisket. Now, I like the pepper, so again, going over the back of it with that coarse ground black pepper. Okay, and trust me, you're not going to overdo it on the pepper. Okay, this is a Texas staple, and honestly, if you've ever had a really good Texas style smoked brisket. You, you're missing out. Uh, just a really nice mix of complex flavors. And really it's all about layering your flavors. And, and that's the way I do it. So I'm gonna get back out there, finish up firing up the yoder, and then we'll see you back by the pit. All right guys, like I said, I'm gonna use the charcoal, bring up that fire. I've thrown a couple chunks of that mesquite on there. I don't really like to cook with mesquite too often, so I'm gonna use it to warm up the pit. Now, I'm looking for a bed of hot coals and a nice, clean, burning flame. Not a smolder, but a nice flame. On that exhaust stack, which should be wide open, I wanna see a blue smoke, almost clear. You don't wanna see any kind of smoke at all. Once that's burning clean, I'm going to drop the cooking chamber lid and bring that temperature up in the pit at least above 200 before I put that brisket on. Also, I want to point out I'm using a water pan here. It's going to help stabilize the temperature and the cooking environment inside that smoke chamber. It doesn't necessarily add more moisture to the meat, but I'll take any bit of help I can get. All right, guys, here we go. My pit's up to about 200 degrees. I got a pretty decent smoke going on. That now I'm using this fireboard and I'm using my port that I installed a few months back. I got an ambient probe right here. Now I figure 
I'm, I'm going to go low on the grate there because I only got a temperature probe up high. So I'm going to go with my ambient right there. And then I'm going to stab the brisket in the, uh, in the point. And go point toward the fire. Now, getting the temperature probe in there. Oop. I'm going to go with the nice thick portion right here. Okay, so I'm going to go right there. Right in that thick part right there. That should give me a really good idea. Actually, let me try it again. Right about there. Okay. Okay, there we go. All right, guys, I got my fireboard connected. And as you can see, um, the brisket, uh, 45 degrees, fresh out of the fridge. And that probe on the cold side of the brisket, just below the stack, about 187, um, coming up slowly. Expect to get to 188 soon. Now the top gauge is reading about the same. Okay, it's usually 25 to 50 degrees cooler than this gauge. Now this one being close to the fire pit, it's gonna read 25 to 50 degrees hotter. Now, the better airflow I get, I can even those up a little bit better. But when I put a cold brisket in, uh, you know, it usually takes me about an hour or so to chase that, that goal. For now, I'm gonna be using the app from the comfort of my home, where it's a little warmer. All right, guys, well, the brisket has been cooking uh, damn near three hours now. I'm averaging some really good temperatures, right around 225, and, and to me that is perfect. That is actually my favorite smoking temperature. Now the bark is getting ready to set up, and if you guys don't know it already, and I'm sure you do, some of you, when the bark passes the finger test, it won't rub off when you rub it with the finger, then it's time to spritz. Now I'm using a distilled, just a, a white, vinegar mix here. It's not apple cider vinegar, it's just a regular white vinegar with water mix. That's all I want to use on there. I don't want to interfere with those delicious flavors I already know it has with all those Uncle Steve's shake and salt and pepper, but I definitely want to keep it moist. Okay, let's take a look. That looks pretty good. I like to hit it from all angles. Get a little bit of water, water's looking good. Okay, not too bad. Now, um, if I had any pulling here with any of those juices, I would be putting a little lump of wood under there, but you know, there's no pulling, um, so it's looking pretty good. Now, if I had a bald spot, you know, that's fat, that's typical, but if I had a bald spot anywhere else, I'd get a little bit more of that Uncle Steve's shake and then just uh, kind of cover up a bald spot. That's when you want to do it, it's right about now. So at this point, I'm seeing about 120 degrees internal temperature. So I'm not going to touch it for a couple more hours. I'm just going to maintain the uh, fire, uh, adding a little bit of hickory once in a while, just to kind of keep it above 200 on my ambient temperature probe. I know on the other side, it's definitely 225 to 250. So it's looking like I, I got really good average temperatures. Our next stop on the list is to wait for that stall. It happens about 165 or so, and we're gonna wait and see what happens here. I'll probably spritz it one more time, wait for that stall, then wrap. All right, guys, looks like I'm past the stall. I'm 168 and climbing. Uh, I like the way the brisket looks, so I'm gonna pull this out. I am really happy how it looks right now. I uh, can't rightfully explain why uh, it's not a pure black bark, but you know what? It doesn't matter, I don't need a pure black bark here. Okay, I am gonna hit it up with some of this uh, sweet and spicy R. Kinda fix it up a little bit. A little bit of a bald spot there, but I just wanna get some last bit of flavor on there. Okay. I'm also going to wet the paper up a little bit right there where I'm gonna slide it back there we go I'm gonna wet it up just a little bit more maybe a little bit more of a spray 
There we go. And I'm going to start wrapping. Okay, so this is how it's sitting in the smoker. That's how I'm going to try to do it in the oven. And oh, by the way, did I mention I'm going to be putting this in the oven? Yeah, I know it. But guess what? BTU is BTU, right? That's good right there. Okay, it's gonna go in the oven. I'm cooking now at this point for feel more than temperature, but I will be checking it once in a while with my Thermo Pro and uh, let's get that to the oven. Okay, here we go, guys. Right on there. Okay, guys, as you can see, I'm set for 250 here. So after you wrap, you can increase the temperature. That's what most Pitmasters do. It's a little trick. So I went to 250. I still want to go low and slow, but I'm going up about 25 to 35 degrees hotter than what I've been averaging on the smoker since about 5 a.m. Almost eight and a half hours on the odor loaded Wichita. And um, I'm definitely past the stall. It went to about 167 and started climbing fast again. So I wrapped it and in the oven it goes. Now I'll be checking it every once in a while, but you know, really for three hours now, you know, if I wanted to, I could go take a shower, I could go to the store, I can go on a beer run, man, I could go wash the truck. So the bottom line is the oven at this point is just like any other grill after you've wrapped it. It's BTU, it's heat. It doesn't matter if you spend it on the Yoder or the Traeger or anywhere else. I'm going with the oven, save your fuel, Trust me, it's going to be a much better cook. All right, guys. As you can see by the clock up there, maybe you can't see it. It's almost 8.15 p.m. We're talking 12, 13, 14, 15, 15 hours total cook time on this brisket. Eight hours plus on the Yoder loaded Wichita with hickory, a little bit of mesquite, but mostly hickory wood. After it broke the stall... We put in the oven. I know what you guys are going to say. Look, BTU is BTU. Once we wrap it, smoking is done. So it's all about putting the oven, cranking up that temperature a little bit, finishing it off. So I wasn't really going for a temperature on the top end. It got the wet peanut butter consistency, and that's what I was looking for. So I'm going to pull it off right now. Guys, I'm really hungry. So we're just gonna show you a really quick little carving and then we're gonna sign off, but here we go. It's hard to really show you guys how this feels, but uh, look at that. Look at that juice right there. So I'm gonna save that, I'm gonna set that aside. I'm sure Sassy's gonna want that. Let me just say this has got the feeling of perfection. And so I'm just going to kind of unwrap it here. I'm just gonna... You know, they say that, uh, you know, if you slap it and it twerks, it's done. Let me pull this up. Definitely, definitely has got a jiggle. Now you see how it's really shrunk down since the cooking. Now during the trimming, I rounded off the flat so that during the smoking process, there's no edges that get burned. Putting the point on my right side, the flat on the left side, I'm going to cut it right down the middle. There we go. I'm going to move it 90 degrees over. I'm going to go right down the middle. Oh yeah, look at that. Now you folks uh, that are following us on the interweb, on our patron page, we're going to be camping, and that's mainly what we made this for. So if you guys want to see where we're going to go camping at, go check out our patron page. Ooh, look at that. That fell apart. That's good. That's good. All right, guys. Mmm. Mmm. That was just so good. 
Guys, so we mainly cook this because we're going to be going camping and we're going to take some brisket with us. And folks, if you've never taken a pre-made brisket out, cooled it, and then made sandwiches for about a week, you're missing out. I really could take taste that Uncle Steve's shake. And we're going to be eating good in the trailer this week. Mm. So I'm definitely not a competition cook, but this is a great backyard brisket. It's not a prime, it's a choice. But that's okay, because it's our choice. We're going to take this thing camping, it's going to feed us for a week, and we'll see you next time. Mm, okay.